What became of your lamb, Glory? Restoration is a little different to resurrection. Uh, restoration has more to do with refurbishment. Uh, think of an old car um, or something that is broken, a building or a, a body or, um, or an artwork even, that needs to be, um, to be restored, to be brought back to life. If a house has been burnt or, a, or a, if a... Um, an artwork has been vandalized or damaged. Its fibers and fabrics have got to be sort of brought to back to the original, brought back to the, the original colors, brought back to the original state, the, the original condition that it was in. And uh, in a very real sense, um, restoration is a process of rebuilding. Now, you don't need to be a criminal to need restoration. You don't need to have done anything to merit restoration. In fact, often the failure to do something merits restoration. What do I mean? Well, think of the self, the identity you carry around with you. There are times, certainly, when you are on top of your game. Um, when we on the ball and running on all c cylinders. But there are also times when we lose our shine, when our sheen begins to dim, when the fire inside begins to flag and even fail. Especially when we've been on a good wicket, we might repeat certain successful habits and sustain them. Uh, all the while, the passage of time, the change, uh, puts who we are on notice. For we are all in a game of constant flux. We are never at a destination. Every mountain conquered reveals yet another mountain beyond. And then we must scale down the mountain and find our ways up new ones, negotiating and uh, interrogating new and unfamiliar territory if we are to grow, if we are to shine, if we are to rebuild the best in ourselves. The irony when one does a very big race like a 70.3 or an Ironman or similar races that span 7 or 10 or 12 or more hours is that the joy and thrill of the event and the adventure, the relief and ecstasy at finishing is followed in short shrift by a strange kind of subdued feeling the next day. It is kind of like a depression. Uh, one is physically sore and emotionally drained, but there is something beyond this which is difficult to put into words. It is almost the vacuum of having climbed a mountain. One cannot roost, you know, one cannot roost on it indefinitely. The interest of those who cares about us shifts, even our interest shifts, as it must to other things, you know, after an, an event like this. And yet, this thing that we have dedicated ourselves to so consistently, this day, the hours that were lived, are now somehow inconsequential and some new challenge must be sought. There is a painful letting go of the summit. There is the painful acknowledgement that we must prospect for a new mountain range and even that summit will never and can never be our ultimate destination. You see, our, our destination must always shift. Our goalposts must always shift. 
Otherwise, we will become the riders of our own coattails. We will tell the same stories over and over again, and these stories will bear less and less relevance to the present and uh, who we are in the now. And you know, I can tell you as a photojournalist, someone who's const constantly looking for stories, um, you know, there, there is a temptation to to um, to recycle, um, to, to to use the stories from the past and to rely on those rather than constantly refurbishing one's archive, you know, with new material. Um, coming back to the Ironman, you know, I felt some of the sadness in the aftermath after, after my um, uh, last 70.3 in Durban. Um, I have to add that right next to that feeling of being subdued is a calm, um, sense of fortitude and, and inner power, the kind of a sense of peace that you know one has done what one set out to do. Um, and I guess it's a kind of confidence that we know who we are, um, you know, from having just done something and, and what we are capable based on something we've just completed. And, and uh, this is a terribly exciting feeling. It's a, it's a calm feeling. It's a quiet feeling, but, it, but it's nevertheless a, 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 um, a great feeling. Um, you know, and it's this feeling that really agitates us for more. Uh, we we want to have that, that, um, that sense of um, strength of our own identity um, welded to reality. We want that, you know, welded even deeper and even more securely into our own lives, in, into the world. And um, we're not sure exactly what that means, but, but we want more of it. Um, and and um, what, what, what could that mean? Does it mean more life? Does it mean more mountains? What is sure. That? You know, when you... Walking with a big load up a mountain, you really realize all the shit that you carry, you got to carry it. Um, you know, earlier I passed some people on the way, they were coming down, and they weren't carrying anything. Of course, I'm sleeping on the top, just slightly different, but I'm, you know, I'm ca I am carrying a paper pack, I'm carrying a lot of water, probably more water than I need, but the doesn't seem to be any water up here but the the bottom line is you know if you're going to climb mountains you, you want to limit your shit that's it and so uh, on my way back home from the race um, i headed to one of south africa's highest mountains i drove late at night around literally around dead bodies in the road and um the conveyor belt of my silver car squealed um, as dust and bitter cold were tossed aside you know, under grounding rubber as the road tilted higher and higher under the stars. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't expect this to happen, but when I arrived, um, you know, as a journalist, I'm allowed to stay uh, free of charge at, at certain places. Um, Anyway, when I arrived, I was the only person due to spend the afternoon and the night on the mountain. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect to be alone on the mountain. You know, I was not prepared either for the fear and the uncertainty of this. And I had a similar sense of conflictedness um, prior to leaving for the 70.3 um, a few days earlier. So this, this mountain was another test um, and once again a test of courage. A test of courage in the face of uncertainty, a test of courage in the face of no coattails, right? Um, and, um, you know, I suspected um, there was something valuable waiting for me um, on those high vaults, uh, somewhere atop that fortress of solitude, which, you know, you can you can have a look on, um, you know, I guess if you Google Monto sources, um, you can have a look at it, um, but you know it's a, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty high mountain. It's a pretty impressive bulk of rock as well, um, and th there's something fearsome about it that that makes it compelling. It makes one want to return there and 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 be there again because there's something about the struggle for life and death, the the, the struggle of a mountain, the, the sheerness of its struggle against the elements, which is almost heroic. It's almost like a heroic. Um, 
um, mass of rock um, shooting up, you know, against all odds against the sky. Um, um, so yeah, and and so I wanted to climb this after the the half Ironman, and um, but the question of doing so alone made me wonder: was I mad or brave? But um, I wanted to go and see, and, and I can tell you there's a world of difference in the mountain one climbs alone. Uh, I can also tell you that in a certain sense, we are all climbers, and we all climb alone. You know, uh, in the half Ironman, you know, you can, you can do that race with 3,000 competitors, um, you know, on the beach, on the roads, on their bikes, and, and, and running, and... Um, whether it's 3,000, 330 or 3, it, it, it's really just you who's got, who's got to do it. it. It's really just down to you to to get through it. Um, no, no one's going to carry you. No one's going to really pick you up. You, you've you got to do it. So, Right, so we're almost at the bottom. Um, <laughs> one of the things with climbing mountains, when you go up, it seems to require a lot more energy. Uh, coming down requires a lot less energy, but it does seem to require more concentration, which is quite interesting. But uh, certainly interesting that coming down is a lot quicker. You know, um, you know that's really um, that, that's really the same thing climbing a mountain, and uh, you know the only person who climbs our mountain is us um, consistently we, we may share aspects of the climb with others but we only ever climb the whole mountain with with who we are um, and um, so in that sense we are the determiners of our pace uh, over the course of that that entire climbing of the mountain we are the determiners of how high we're going to climb in our lives and what risks we do or do not take um, you know, we may share some of those risks in in a particular scenario. You know, with with certain other races, but in in essence, it's 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 a it's a unique set of circumstances for us. And and um, while we may look to those next to us for guidance, um, at the end of the day, we must make a choice, and and um, only we're going to know if that choice is right. And you know, we may not even think about it. We may not. We may not know either way. We may not choose to know. But um, it's for us to know or not to know. Um, we, um, we we then turn in, in the narrative itself to, to Oscar and, and interrogate the veracity of his mountain. But um, for the purposes of this video, we, uh, we're going to sort of jump ahead and, and, and uh, just concentrate on the mountain. Um, a little further and um, the the point really is, is that the gift of the mountain is that there is nowhere to run um, and there's a what, what one sees when one is on top of the mountain is this whole world spread in every direction to see to feel to be you know there's the world within ourselves and there's the world beyond ourselves and you tend to see it you tend to have the perspective you know, over it when you, when you've climbed a mountain, there's also some perspective that has to be said when you build beneath the mountain. You know, when you're not on the mountain, uh, when you're starting your climb, and um, often people are very, um, um, you know, there's a sense of depression, there's a sense of um, despair, there's a sense of almost futility when when one's below the mountain looking at where one needs to go and um, this is unfortunate because you know whether one is on the mountain or off it um, it's still there it still needs to be traversed whether it's up or down and and then there's going to be another one and uh, you know to to make a to make a big deal out of one mountain is, is kind of a shame because the other mountains that are waiting for us as well and the sooner we get on our way up or down you know, the sooner we're going to be on to the next one, and, and each one gets easier to some extent. Um, and it's up to us to make it more challenging or not. Um, you know, depending on our will, depending on our energy, depending on our confidence in ourselves, depending on our 
confidence in the world, depending on our ability to interpret the world um, accurately. And, um, you know, that's got a lot to do with how our own sense of validation. Something that's not in the the, the chapter uh, in Fugitive, um, it's a book that, you know, has just gone live on Amazon actually in the last day or so. But something that's not in there is, is um, the invalidity of, to some extent, of the, of this race, of the half man, which is, um, you know, um, people who are, how can I put it, they may be doing the race, they, they, they're nevertheless not fit, they may be doing the race that they are nevertheless going to be the back markers, and, um, you know, one, one could say, you know, are they then truly um, living up to this whole ideal of, the, of this half Iron Man, you know, with the whole Iron Man ethos. And, you know, it's for that person to decide. Um, you know, the elite racer may not think too much of the guys finishing hours behind them, but the person who is doing it um, may may well think so. And um, in my case, you know, I'd done the race before. I, I'd done the half Ironman numerous times, actually. And and one of the things that was, was con- a, a sense of conflict was, well, why do it if if things aren't perfect? I mean, I'd been sick. I'd, I'd been writing. I hadn't prepared properly. I hadn't had. Uh, I, I hadn't given myself enough time to prepare. And so, with this imperfect preparation, does one then go and risk, you know, spending a lot of money and not completing the race? Does one go and risk um, further illness because I was actually slightly ill when I when I left? And um, you know, um, and and there was a, a funny moment when I actually went to register and I actually bought quite a lot of the merchandise. I bought a shirt and I bought a mug and I bought a beanie and so on. And having bought it and and registered, I you know I thought, well, if I if I struggle, all, all I can do is just I don't have to finish. Um, I can just pull out. And and then I thought, but in this moment, in this this year. Um, I may have, I may be an Iron Man historically, but but right now, can I can I say that? And and that was really quite a quite a a moment of pause for me, where where I actually then took it quite seriously. But the point being, um, you know, is the this this half Iron Man a valid race? And what I really want to touch on there is, you know, in the race itself, there are. There's supposed to be a time trial. There's supposed to be a, a, a cycling um, leg which lasts, um, for me, it lasts about three and a half hours, but it can be an hour less than that for some people and, or an hour more. Um, you know, between, say, two to four hours for some people. But um, it's supposed to be a time trial, and um, that means each cyclist needs to cycle on his own and not draft other riders. And this is where, this is the part that a lot of people who don't do the event wouldn't know. And that is when you, the rider, when, when you, me, and, and you wanting to complete this event, do you cheat? Do you, do you, do you ride behind another rider? Do you draft? Do you, do you try and save energy? Do, do you try and make it easier for yourself? And um, and that's really where, where this whole Iron Man identity can be challenged um, in the sense that, you know, are you fooling yourself? Are you chasing an idea but you're actually running away from from chasing it in an honest way, if I can put it that way? And so that was some of the thing we wanted to address in the fugitive narrative, just is this idea of chasing an idea but, but actually doing it in a in a way that's kind of dishonest. And the the, the, the major thing you see in um, – in these triathlons where you have the time trial slap bang in the middle and it's probably the most time you're going to spend of the three um of this of the three elements in the triathlon the swim the cycle and the run the, the cycle takes the most time and so the temptation to to draft to save energy to, to ride behind someone else especially if you're a middle marker especially if you're a back marker um there's far less refereeing of of uh, of of the uh, competitors kind of in the back of the field, and so you know one has the freedom to cheat or to make it easier for yourself. 
the question is, do you? And, uh, and, and this is kind of where you come to the mountain range of yourself and, and, and do, you, do you make it a genuine climb? Do you, do you make your race a genuine race? You're going to know. You're going to know whether it is or, or whether it isn't. I'm just saying that the, the, um, that, that, that Ironman um, brand, there's, this, there's, a, there's an aspect to it that's genuine and there's an aspect to it that is less genuine. And, and um, you know, it's kind of up to the uh, individual to, to determine which is which, just as how we determine how high the mountain's going to be and our pace and all that, 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 all that stuff. And you may think it's uh, a silly comment to make, but in the end, we do become the bar barometers and the um, sort of like the exchequers of our own identities. We we det we determine ultimately who we are and, and what we become. And uh, you know, th there's responsibility in that. And sometimes there's th you know when there when there isn't when we don't take responsibility, then there isn't. And uh, and the result is this 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 um, fugitive race that, that we find ourselves on. And uh, I don't think any, any one of us want to find ourselves there because it's, it's, uh, it, it invalidates our efforts. And we, we, um, we, we may find ourselves looking back and, and um, regretting some of, those, some of that laziness. So, um, so to, to come back to the narrative, um, you know, the gift of the mountain, the gift of this, this race, is that there is nowhere to run, whether we race it or not, we're still racing. So if I can put this in perspective, the gift of the mountain is really, even if one chooses not to, do, if I had chosen not to do this half Ironman, that's nevertheless a race that I'm I'm doing by not doing it, if that makes sense. I'm just making it a a virtual non-race. It, it's just stepping over something that, that, instead of stepping into something. So, um, yeah, and so when we, we take these things and, and instead of, you know, because there was a time when I thought doing this race w would be like a chore and climbing the mountain would be a chore. Um, th there's the other part, which is not stepping into the world, but it's, it's stepping into one's own world, it's stepping into yourself. And when, when you see it as an internal journey as well as an external journey, that's when... I think you get that real magic, which is where you say, you know what, we, we are not only part of this world, we are the world. We are both part of what's happening externally to us and internally to us. Um, but at the same time, it's only the, by climbing into these spaces that we become ourselves and we know ourselves in the world and the world knows us. The mountain ranges of the self tower around us every moment of every day. Um, for as long as we don't move, as soon as we begin to trade on the past, on what we did rather than what we do, that process of restoration begins to fade. We have to constantly reclaim ourselves, consistently reassert our identities. We live in a changing world and we have to adapt and change and conquer every successive mountain, hoist our flag on it, and then do it all again.